Yes, is everyone and welcome back to another video coming to you not live from sunny Cyprus. In today's video I wanted to share with you my 2020 summer Kindle reading list. Specifically my Greek summer Kindle reading list meaning that all of the books I want to share with you today are either by a Greek writer or have a Greek theme to the story itself. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six books on here to share with you. I haven't read any of them. They are on my to read list. So I'm just gonna go through each one, tell you a little bit about why I've picked them and probably read out the blurb and then we can read them all together. If you want to follow me on Goodreads, I shall leave a link down below and we can catch up with where we all are with our progress on the books and what we all think of them. So let's just dive straight into the list. So the first book is called Bucket to Greece, Volume 1, A Comical Living Abroad Adventure. This is a non-fiction book by V.D. Bucket. I came across this book on Facebook group A Good Greek Read, run by my good friend John Manuel, and this group lists all different kinds of fabulous um, books that are either right, written by Greek authors or about um, Greek themed stories and I regularly check on there to see if there are any new books that I haven't read yet. So this was one of the ones that was recommended. I shall read you the blurb. Bucket to Greece is a delightfully comical account of a British couple starting over in a new country, complete with imported cats, whilst discovering the joys and pitfalls of adapting to a strange culture. Crossing paths with a local undertaker, Spiros, was a stroke of good luck for Victor and Marigold since he just happened to have a house to sell in the charming Greek mountain village of Meli. Of course, Spiros didn't explain the strange arrangement of an Albanian living in the stone shed at the bottom of the garden, or mention the old lady's next door filthy habit of burning plastic every morning. He also failed to mention his late uncle had plunged to his death from the roof terrace, but did a wonderful job of selling them on the spectacular views. Really do enjoy reading people's accounts of um, expat life or when they've moved to Greece or Cyprus, but I haven't read a really good one in quite a while, so I'm really looking forward to this one. Next up is Stephen Fry's Mythos, The Greek Myths Retold. If you know me or you know my books, then you know that I am a big fan of Greek mythology. My second book, Theseus and the Mother-in-Law, was about Greek mythology, and also my children's book, The Adventures of Omicron the Owl, is a Greek mythological book for children. So this has been out for quite a while, and I still haven't got around to reading it, so this is definitely on my summer list. No one loves and quarrels, desires and deceives as boldly and brilliantly as Greek gods and goddesses. They are like us, only more so, their actions and adventures scrawled across the heavens above. From the birth of the universe to the creation of humankind, Stephen Fry retells these myths for our tragic, comic, fateful age. Witness Athena born from the cracking open of Zeus's great head and follow Persephone down into the dark realm of Hades. The Greek gods are the best and worst of us and in Stephen Fry's hands they tell us who we are. So this has been a bestseller and I'm really looking forward to that one. Third up on the list is The Girl Under the Olive Tree by Leah Fleming. I've been meaning to read this one for a very long time as well. It's been on a good Greek reads list for quite some time and the author has also written two other books, The Last Pearl and Dancing at the Victory Cafe. This is a wartime book set in Crete. These kind of stories I always find usually are very well written because there's so much historical background that the author can use anyway um, that there really is no reason for it to be a bad book. So I shall read you the blurb. May 1941 and the island of Crete is invaded by paratroopers from the air. After a lengthy fight thousands of British and Commonwealth soldiers are forced to take to the hills or become escaping prisoners of war sheltered by the Cretan villagers. Sixty years later Lois West and her young son Alex invite feisty great aunt Penn to a special 85th birthday celebration on Crete knowing she has not been back there since the war. Penelope George is reluctant to go but is persuaded by the fact it is the 60th anniversary of the battle. On the outward voyage from Athens she relives her experiences in the city from her early years as a trainee nurse to those last dark days stranded on the island, the last female foreigner. So that one definitely sounds like a good read and I can't wait to dive in. Now the next book looks absolutely brilliant. If you are a fan of Madeline Miller, like I am, who wrote Circe and the Song of Achilles, then this will definitely be of interest to you. So this is called A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. If you love the story of Troy, as I do, this will be right up your street. In this book, broadcaster and classicist Natalie Haynes retells the story of the Trojan War, but from an all-female perspective. 
so that's something we haven't seen before for sure. In the middle of the night, Grusa awakes to find her beloved Troy engulfed in flames. Ten seemingly endless years of brutal conflict between the Greeks and the Trojans are over, and the Greeks are victorious. Over the next few hours, the only life she has ever known will turn to ash. Powerfully told from an all-female perspective, A Thousand Ships gives voices to the women, girls and goddesses who for so long have been silent. This one just fills me with excitement. Um, the reviews on this have been amazing, literally all five stars. I think we've all been told the story of Troy so many times over and over again in film, in books, whatever. So this to me is a stroke of genius from um, a woman's perspective. So. Do let me know if you've read any of these books, by the way, and what you think of them, or if you're currently reading them as well. I'd love to know your thoughts. And for those of you who love a good romance set in a sunny, hot climate, then this one is for you. One Last Greek Summer by Mandy Baggett. I previously read Truly Madly Greekly, which was a really lovely, easy read. Beth Martin is 31, newly divorced, and wondering just what life holds for her. Best friend Heidi's adamant that all the answers lie in Corfu, the island where the girls parted away their youth. So cue a trip to a sun-drenched Greek island, Uzo cocktails, a trip down memory lane, and Alex Halas, the man Beth has never quite forgotten. As they dance under the stars, the sand beneath their toes, old feelings begin to resurface, and Beth might just have a chance to take back her life if they can learn to love the people they've become. Mandy Baggett is an international best-selling romance writer, so uh, you just can't go wrong with her book. So if that's something you're looking for, a bit of romance and a bit of a holiday as well, that is the book for you. Now, the last book on my list, I don't know how I have missed for so long. This is called Cave of Silence, and it is written by Greek author and also Greek actor Kostas Kromidas. Now the book is actually written in Greek and has been translated to English and he's written five best-selling novels. I think Cave of Science is his first but I'm not entirely sure. I was actually recommended another one but I decided to go to what I thought was his first um, novel, Cave of Silence, to read that first. Dimitri, a young actor, is enjoying the lucky break of his life, a part in an international production shot on an idyllic Greek island and a romance with Anita, his beautiful co-star. When his uncle dies, he has one last wish, that Dimitri scatters his ashes on the island of his birthplace. At first, he welcomes this opportunity to shed some light on his family's history, a history clouded in secrecy. But why does his mother beg him to hide his identity once there? Based on true events, the Cave of Silence moves seamlessly between past and present to spin a tale of love, passion, betrayal and cruelty. So this looks like quite an in-depth read. Um, I know all his books are apparently based on true stories, so that for me makes it even more compelling, because if there's an element of truth in these stories, then that usually leaves its mark on me more. So that's definitely one that I'm really looking forward to reading and might even be first on my list. As you know, maybe a thousand ships might be first and then this one. So there you go guys, that was my 2020 Greek summer Kindle reading list. Do let me know if you've read any of the books, what you've thought about them, or if you have any suggestions for this summer's Greek list. And don't forget to follow me on Goodreads as well, where you can see my progress and I'll update you on uh, when I finish the books and what I've thought about them. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe if you like my content and hit the like button and the bell button and the notification button and all that jazz. And hopefully I'll see you again very soon. Have a great summer, everyone. Bye-bye.